Reading with your kids. Hola, Niha, Konnichiwa, Assalamu alaikum, Shalom, Jambo. Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are so happy that you're part of our beautiful Reading with Your Kids family. Please be sure to connect with us on social media, facebook.com slash reading with your kids. It's at Jedly Magic on Twitter and at Reading with Your Kids on Instagram. Our guest today is coming to us from Kent in the United Kingdom. Her name is Heidi Bryant, and she is the author of The Cat Nap Stories, a great trilogy of books for kids. Before we head across the pond to the United Kingdom to speak to Heidi, we want to encourage you to head out to the beautiful city of Chicago and join the Reading With Your Kids podcast at Kids Expo, February 8th and 9th, Schaumburg Convention Center in Schaumburg, Illinois. It is going to be an amazing time. The Reading With Your Kids podcast will be there. We will have a totally interactive booth where you and your family can experience what it's like to be a guest on the Reading With Your Kids podcast. I will also be presenting two amazing magic shows, one on Saturday, one on Sunday. It's going to be a great time. Our friends from the Good Kids Club will be there and so many other attractions. It's all happening February 8th and 9th, Schaumburg Convention Center, Schaumburg, Illinois. It's the Kids Expo. Joining us on the line right now from Kent in the United Kingdom, right outside of the beautiful city of London. She is the author of three great stories that we're going to talk about today. Vince goes to Paris, Vince discovers the Golden Triangle, and Vince discovers De Seville. We're really excited to discover Heidi Bryant. Heidi, how are you? Welcome to the show. I'm good, thank you, Jed. How are you? I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. The, the uh, catnap stories... Uh, they, 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 you know, touch it, touch my heart in a lot of ways because they're uh, about pets, and they're also, um, you wrote them to encourage kids to learn about other cultures and other languages. Yeah, that's right. I, I think it, for me, it's really important that you know, children growing up in this global environment, that you know, they get to understand different people, different cultures and different languages. So I wanted to introduce these types of things in a fun way into an adventure story. Now, I, here in the States, we uh, we are accused of, of not learning other languages, and we've kind of earned that. Um, hopefully that's, that's changing. But there's an awful lot of folks here in the States that know English or American English, anyway, <laughs> and uh, you know, and so when they try, you know, I, when they travel around the world, that's they just expect everybody to to speak English to them. Um, it's not a realistic expectation, um, and it's you know, kind of uh, earned us a, a kind of a bad reputation in that way. Is that the same in the United Kingdom? Is or, or are you folks open more open to learning other languages? So I guess it's it's, diff it's probably similar and different in, and also different in ways. So, um, you know, English is an international language. There's many different, um, you know, versions of it, you know, all over the world. Um, and so, yeah, I think people do expect that everyone speaks English, um, especially, I mean, the UK you know, what I wanted to do was when I started writing the books was to really try to encourage children to, um, you know, actually think outside of the box. And, you know, my experience of um, being at school and growing up and all that sort of thing is I learnt languages and, and in my adult life when I start travelling, when I'm using my languages, it makes the whole world become a lot more... Uh, I suppose, inviting and, um, you know, easy to deal with situations. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's, you know, something that's really important to bring to life. Um, you really can't um, underestimate the value of being able to speak to someone in their own language and, and make that connection. Absolutely. And, and, what, and I'm not a, a linguist by any means. Languages are, are very challenging to me, but... 
one of the things I've discovered as I travel to different countries, if you at least make the effort and learn how to say hello, thank you, I don't speak your language, could you help me? It, it really makes a difference because it's um, – it it, it kind of takes away that uh, idea that, oh, all Americans are arrogant or all, all nat- native English speakers are arrogant. Yeah, exactly. I, th- I think so. And, you know, the, the great thing about learning languages when you're a kid is, you know, your brain is like a sponge. Mm-hmm. So you're much more able to learn languages if you start at an early age than when you you know, get older and into sort of adulthood. So, um, you know, I think if you can start children, you know, at sort of toddler stage and upwards learning different languages, they just pick it up and, you know, they won't forget it. Yeah. Now, tell us about Vince, this character (laughs) that you created that takes us around the world. So Vince is based on um, my first cat, um, when I was nine years old, um, my mum told me at the time that it was a really silly name for a cat. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's what I wanted to call him. So that's what we did. And, you know, he was just an amazing, he was just an amazing cat. And, you know, really my best friend for 18 years. Um, and yeah, so I just decided that I was going to pick him as the, you know, main character and then introduce other cats from, you know, my life and from my travels and to try to think about, you know, different cats that you would perhaps encounter in those different countries. So, for example, in the Vince Discovers the Golden Triangle, I include a an Indian Siamese cat and then give her a name which I feel is inspirational um, and, you know, just to bring to light that there's different names and different reasons why people would call animals or friends certain things. Great. And, and as you, you mentioned that, that, that Vince discovers the Golden Triangle, that's set in India. And what a fascinating country India is. Yeah, I mean... It's it's one of my favourite countries. Um, really, I I can't wait to go back. It's so so different um, to anywhere I've been before. But then also because obviously the English colonised you know India, you know there are actually places in India that feel like England, mm-hmm. which is really strange, like the countryside and the buildings and things. But yeah, India is just so fabulous. <clears throat> There is so much um, diversity and colour and things to see and different foods to eat and different festivals and amazing stories about some of the buildings, you know, like the Taj Mahal, um, you know, and the reasons why they they do certain things are, you know, they they really make you feel as if you're when you go there they really make you feel as if you're part of the culture and you're part of their life when you when you go in um you know the festival the holy festival there which is all about um you know love and light and removing um evilness and bad feelings towards each other and it's just you know amazing things to do um that perhaps we don't necessarily celebrate in other in other countries like in the US or the UK for example mm-hmm. fascinating and and i've I, I haven't had the chance to travel to india but we have lots of connections with india here on the show and and we've had a number of, of authors on the show one of the things that blows me away is that, that I, I i i i don't have the exact number but i I, I, I've heard that in India there are like 28 or more official languages, and then there's even more languages on top of that that that, that are spoken around the, the country. Yeah, I mean for sure. One of the, I mean I I talk about all of the different languages, you know, in the back of the book. And yeah, you're right. There are several official languages: um, Hindi, Bengali, for example, Punjabi, um, as well as English. Um, and, you know, 
the languages are not universally spoken across India, and India is such a large country that you could move from one state to another and not be understood because the language is so different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And tell us about Vince Goes to Paris. So Vince Goes to Paris was my first book, and um, I decided to write it actually about a year ago. So about a year ago today, um, I sat down with my mom and said, I want to do this book. What do you think? And it's a completely crazy idea because it's completely different to what I've done before. Um, and Paris was based around actually one of my oldest and dearest friends um, who lives in France. Um, and we did this um exchange trip a number of years ago and it's based when when we were both at school and the the story is based around that and the amazing places that you can get to visit so the Eiffel Tower Notre Dame and the Louvre Museum um, and actually a funny part about this story is I, I bumped into my old French teacher a few years ago and she actually <laughs> checked my French in my book for me um, so I had her you know 25 years later checking my homework <laughs> as a little favor for me to That's do wonderful. so <laughs> she must have been thrilled that you were still interested in language yeah for sure um, you know it's it's really strange how things you know turn around and um, you know, she and I are very good friends now on Facebook. And who would have thought that, you know, when you join, when you go to a school, she was one of the most uh, influential people in my life. So she brought the language alive and she's the reason why I studied other languages. And I told her that and she was so, you know, surprised and happy and pleased that she'd actually influenced somebody, you know, because she was you know, she felt as though. Um, you know, she'd, she'd done all this work, but she'd never really had any sort of thanks back. And this was really important for her when I, you know, bumped into her and then told her what I was actually doing. Now, what was it that she did that made language really come to life in you? Um, I guess one of my sort of best memories or a couple of best memories for her was, you know, one day we turned up at the French class at school. And she'd gone out and bought croissants and jam. And when you're sort of 10, 11 years old, and, you know, you, this is a long time ago now, mm-hmm. um, you've never seen croissants and jam. You're like, wow, this is great. This is this what they really eat in, in France? Um, and, you know, that was one that was one thing. And then the other thing was that she would take us on these exchange trips and she would you know, teach us French songs on the way. So we'll be on the coach on the way and we would sing French songs. And then we arrive. Everything is in French, even if we can't speak the language fluently. But you're like, yeah, I love this. And what she taught us when we arrived in France, people, you know, you practice the language and people actually understand you and then they respond back. Mm-hmm. And it sort of just really shows that this, um, you know, subject that you're learning is, um, you know, it actually works and it makes sense. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes I think you can learn a subject and think, when am I ever going to use this? Um, and this just, you know, just brought it alive when you can put, put into practice what you've been learning, I guess. Yeah. Now, one of the things you mentioned is that, you know, like last year when you had this idea to write a book, uh, you went to your mom and, you know, you said, this is kind of a crazy idea because it's so different than what you had been doing. What was it that inspired you to leave what you were doing or, or, or to take that, that detour from uh, what had been the trajectory of your life uh, to get into writing children's books? Um, so a couple of things. Um, you know, one one is a little bit of a sad story in the fact that I had, you know, my my cat, Vince, um, you know, was 18 years old when he sadly passed away. Um, and a few weeks after that, I, I felt that I needed to get another kitten. So I bought another kitten, which is my cat, Mickey, my, my cat, Mickey. 
Now, I had her for 16 years, and unfortunately, last year, she became very ill. So the inspiration around writing about cats was to preserve her memory, Vince's memory, and, you know, to sort of think about other cats I have, past and present and future, and to talk about them because they're really amazing creatures and, you know, they do really fun things. Um, and it was just, I guess, because my background is marketing. I've done some design work as well. And I wanted to do something that was fun and was actually going to make a difference to other people and to influence other people. And, you know, what better way to do it than to combine things about stories about cats, travel and languages so that you can incorporate everything in there and you can really show all of the different amazing places that you can go to and the different um, experiences that you can have by traveling to these different places. And I suppose because I've traveled quite extensively across the world, I've got so many other new stories to, to bring out as well, which I think children would love. Excellent. Yeah, I agree. And it's, uh, it is I, one of the things I tell kids uh, when, when I'm presenting to kids is that books are really magical and, and, and the sense that a book can take you into the past. It can, it can give you a glimpse into the future and it can actually take you around the world. And in a great book, you can re- really, really immerse yourself in a book and feel like you're in that 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 country and, and really in that culture. Yeah, exactly. And that's exactly what I wanted to achieve with with these books. Um, you know, and the the third book that I wrote, which you know I um, published in July, was actually all about a trip that we did this year. Um, in fact, in in March, and you know, one of the things that I really wanted to get across about this particular city, Seville, was the amazing smell of orange blossoms that you could smell all around the city because it was at a time when you arrive and all the trees are laden with these, you know, beautiful flowers and you just wander around the city and the wind is blowing gently and all you can smell is orange blossoms. I wish I could, you know, package up the smell in the book so that when you could open it up, you would smell it as well. <laughs> oh, that must be amazing. There is there is a city here in the States. It's called Hershey, Pennsylvania, where they make Hershey bars. And you can literally walk around the city and smell chocolate everywhere you go. Oh, my God, that must be amazing. I have to go there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it really is a beautiful place, and Seville sounds like a, a really beautiful place. Other than this smell, what else about Seville is is so fascinating for you? So Seville is one of those cities that I always wanted to visit, always just had a real desire to go. And the pictures um, and the illustrations that, I've included in the book really don't do it justice. Um, The most amazing, amazing, beautiful place in Seville is the Plaza de España. Um, It's this stunning, and it's the image that I use on the front cover of the book. It's just a stunning, um, you know, square that was built, and it has um, just everything in it. You know, it's just a stunning, stunning. plaza where you can have a little boat ride you can go and have a picnic you can jump on a horse-drawn carriage um there's street artists performing um you know and it's just a really really beautiful really really beautiful place you you come across it and you're like wow this is amazing um you know the other parts of the seville landscape is the cathedral and the Giralda Tower and that tower is like 33 stories high and you cannot imagine you know what it's like when you when you get in there and I was really taken aback when we went in and instead of steps it slopes all the way around which you think okay that's fine 
when you get to like level 11 and you're still walking and you're like, there's another 20. Well, you don't actually know how many levels there are until you get to the top mm-hmm. and you realize people are coming down. And it's just, yeah, it's just an amazing um, place. And this cathedral is actually where um, Christopher Columbus is buried. Oh. And so there's all sorts of like really amazing little facts and figures that you find out by going into this, you know, beautiful cathedral. That's wonderful. That's uh, really, really exciting. Tell us what, where, where in the world are you dreaming of going? You've, you've gone to so many <laughs> places, but where, where is it that you, where's, where are the places that you haven't been to yet that you're really looking forward to visiting? Um, so one of the places that I'm really looking forward to visiting is Egypt. Mm-hmm. And actually, I'm sort of hoping that one of my stories is going to be a little bit different in the fact that we will potentially do something around ancient Egypt. Mm-hmm. I don't want to give away too much at the moment, but it's going to be a collaboration between myself and one of my friends who is a bit of a crazy inventor. <laughs> so we're going to wind something up with that into the book. Um, so I think Egypt is one of those places. Um, I think also, you know, we have to obviously do a U.S. book, um, but there's so many different places to choose, you know, where to go. So I'm thinking now you've told me about this Hershey mm-hmm. place and the chocolate, and that might be nice to go to. Um, but, yeah, I want to do something, you know, really, really different. Um, uh, I think the other place I'd like to include is Africa because you can imagine all of the different animals and scenery that you can come across. Mm-hmm. So I think there are a couple of ideas that we have at the moment. Well, that's really wonderful, and it's great that you've you've chosen this theme because it's, you know, you could bring Vince all around the world, and you'll never run out of of story ideas. No, exactly, and you know, some of the things that um, myself and my friends and family have done on our travels are things that, you know, you perhaps wouldn't include on a normal vacation. Um, so including different things like, for example, you know, this train journey across India, um, in the Golden Triangle and, you know, other things. It's just trying to show that, you know, you can go to these different places and it's not just a beach holiday or it's not just a, um, theme park or a city or something. There's lots of other things included. One of the things that we talk about here on the show is that that when you when you're an author, you the the minute your book is published, you become the marketing director for your book. Now, with that marketing background that you had, were you surprised by that? And and has that marketing background helped you in in getting the Adventures events out there to the world? Um, Definitely it's helped me um, because it's something that obviously is second nature to me. Um, But being the author, um, the designer, the marketing director is quite a big task (laughs) so obviously I need to work with you know people like you guys um, and other people to actually support me because um, you know I I can only do so much Um, you know it's really funny because I do actually have my cats helping me on a daily basis and you you wouldn't you you might laugh at this but um, one of the when I was actually creating the Paris book I had uh, kitten at the time, 14, she was about 14 weeks old. And she was so enthralled by the mouse moving across my screen on my desk <laughs> that she was just tapping the screen and it really looked like she was proofreading my document. Uh-huh. And I'm like, this is brilliant. <laughs> but I mean, that is, that's, you're, you're absolutely right. It's, it's really funny. But as someone who is, is marketing and trying to tell the world about your book, uh, along with thousands of other authors who are trying to tell the world about their book, you got to be creative. <laughs> you have to find something unique to kind of spread the word. 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the, the good thing is that I have some really great illustrators who work with me who design the, the illustrations and the animations. Um, I've been out to all sorts of different places and it's around sort of getting the word out with your friends and family and not turning down any opportunity. Mm-hmm. So most recently I, I um, did a trip to the Middle East um, and I've been working at some schools and talking to, you know, the children and, and things like that. And so I didn't expect this time last year that, this year I would be just coming back from a Middle Eastern trip having been invited to a school um, and each connection that I have you know from these different meetings sends me off in a different direction so joining another author's convention or something and um, you know really trying to explore the different opportunities and when we think about you know the story is all about cats in the UK we, probably in the same in the US we have charities that support cats and you know rescue um, cats from different situations you know maybe they've been ill-treated or they've just been born out in the wild and they need a home so we work with closely with those sorts of charities and you know carry out events um, where people are going because they are cat, basically cat mad. Mm-hmm. So they're really great opportunities for us. Um, so, yeah, it's just around thinking about the different aspects of the book and where you can where you can promote it, um, you know, to the best of your ability, I suppose. Yeah. Well, we want to give you a chance to promote your website and let folks know where they can go to connect with you, find out about, find out about the books that are available right now, and also be the first to learn about the new books that are coming out. Perfect. Thank you. Well, my website is catnapstories.com, um, and we also have, obviously, a Facebook and Instagram page where we put a lot of our updates, so... That's at Catnap Stories. Um, and you'll see lots of information about our blogs and events and, and things that are going on. Um, and we do have the ability for people to sign up to our newsletter where we can send um, special offers and, you know, more details about our forthcoming books. That is excellent. Well, we really want to encourage everybody to check out Catnap stories.com and find out all about Vince and all the adventures that Vince is going on. We've had such a great time speaking to our friend from the UK, Heidi Bryant. Heidi, thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Daniel Jude Miller. He is the author and illustrator of Monsters in Manhattan. We have a fantastic conversation with him. It is a whole lot of fun. You know, we spoke to Heidi Bryant about the fact that as the author of a children's book, you are in charge of marketing and designing and all sorts of fantastic and very difficult things. (laughs) But you don't have to do it alone. The Reading With Your Kids podcast, we have a number of great author services that can help you spread the word about your fantastic book. Our certified great read program has helped many, many books stand out from amongst the crowd of books that are published every single month. That is, a, that's a great program that lots and lots of authors have benefited from. We also are able to produce book trailers for you. And of course, being a guest on the podcast, it's fun, it's easy, and it gives you the chance to tell thousands of people about your fantastic book. Why don't you go to our website, readingwithyourkids.com, click on the author services button at the top of the page, find out how we can help you spread the word about your fantastic children's book. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so very wonderful. Of course, I want to thank Heidi Bryant. Be sure to check out Cat Nap Stories. I also want to thank my producer, Fatima Khan, for all that she does for the show. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. And most of all, we want to thank you. Thank you so much for being part of our beautiful Reading With Your Kids family. And thank you so much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.